For Grandma Margaret, I have just gotten home from the longest of long 12 hours that somehow turned into 16 hours because of staffing issues nursing shifts. I am exhausted mentally and physically, and I feel filthy with sweat, tears, and many other things I should not be covered in. All I want to do right now is chop something into oblivion until I feel somewhat normal again. I want to not have to think for just a little while. When I unlock my apartment door I am surprised to find Grandma Margaret sitting at the kitchen table. Smiling, as always. After a shower and a change of clothes I realizes that exactly what I need to do, is make noeffla soup for myself and Grandma, what is noeffla soup you may ask? It is a German dumpling soup that you'll be hard-pressed to find in any diner outside of the Midwest. Those who eat it are picky about how it is made and no two people make it exactly the same. Not only that, but it is a recipe that is impossible to make exactly the same every time that you make it. Grandma Mary taught me how to make it as a small girl. Long before junior high and shortly after I learned to read. It has always been our favorite meal to share, starting with the vegetables, I carefully peels the potatoes, making sure that I cut off the skin, and only a small amount of potato. No conversation passes between the two of us, Grandma always knows when I needed a mental break at the end of the day and how most times I can't talk about what went so horribly wrong due to patient privacy. She never pushes me to talk about it. Instead, she sits at the table and watches as I goes through the motions of preparing our dish, a pound or so of potatoes later, I'm never too careful about the amounts that go into making noeffla soup, or the recipe. Noeffla soup is not a dish of measurement, it is a dish of feelings. The amounts that go into it depend on what you're hungry for at the moment, what looks right, or what feels right. No recipe has ever been put on paper, just passed on from one generation to the next with wise words of. Whenever it looks like enough, dear. Grandma always said that it was not a recipe meant to be shrunk or modified. It always makes a large amount and any attempt at shrinking has been unsuccessful, although making it larger comes out perfectly every time. This works well when you are from the Midwest and are a firm believer in freezing the extra for a day when you don't want to make it from scratch, I chop the celery, carrots, and onions quickly as Margaret looks on from the table, nodding her approval occasionally. Once all of the vegetables are cooking in a lot of butter, yes, it's bad for you, but most comfort foods are, it's time to make the noeffle dough. My favorite part of making this meal, and also the most comforting. Eggs, flour, and a tiny bit of chicken broth get mixed together until everything is mixed together. The secret is to use only a certain amount of flour and add more chicken broth until it is right. Doing the reverse, adding set amounts of all three ingredients and adding more flour tends to make the dough taste just like you would think it would. Flour some people prefer chicken noodle soup, others like macaroni and cheese after long days, for me it is noeffla soup. Creating the dough is one of the most relaxing things I could think to do after a long day and grandma watches carefully as I knead the dough and rolls it into snakes. Only every once in a while does she gestures to add just a little more chicken broth, dropping bits of dough into boiling chicken broth puts me into a trance. As I place the lid on the pot to boil for several minutes my mind slips into the past. The bad melts away quickly, and memories of standing on a stool wearing grandma's second best apron make their way to the front of my mind. I remember the hem of the apron dragging on the floor at first, being so little I could barely see over the counter, then I remember the awkward middle school years and unloading my boy and friend troubles over a bowl of noeffle dough, lastly I remember becoming an adult and trying hard to make time in my busy life for grandma's house at least once a week. Though, once work, friends, significant others, and my own children came into the picture it seems that almost two would go by before I found myself back in her kitchen again, as I put the finishing touches on the soup and turn off the burner, the memories fade and I am back in my own apartment once again. Grandma says nothing, but she has always made my day better, just by being there. I dish a single bowl of soup, butter a piece of bread, because nothing goes with noeffla soup the way a buttered piece of bread does. And sit down at the table. Grandma Mary has been gone for 11 years now, and on the hardest days, after the worst shifts, I always miss her the most, the regrets become an inner monologue, before being spoken out loud, did I spend enough time with her? All for love. Predik stared back at the reflection in the mirror in disbelief. He was transfixed by what he saw. 
a smile slowly and surly just lit up his face and made him look radiant. He leaned forward to take a closer look. He had after all taken a step forward in making his life look different. Perhaps it was just his over-imaginative mind, humored by the seven-years-old mirror sporting countless stains and scratches. There were countless stains and scratches elsewhere, in the hidden recesses of his heart. The domestic helper swore she cleaned all the mirrors with Colin glass cleaner and wiped it with the scratch-free dusting cloth that Vina buys for the house every month. Pratik doubted if the stains and scratches that burdened his mind could ever mend it if he came clean. Both Vina, his wife of fourteen years, and he were too busy to lay the rules rigidly and enforce compliance. They didn't want to lose a good-natured and trustworthy helper and turned a blind eye to her small faults. It was however a concoction of inexperience. Laziness and complacency, coupled with their blinding egos that made them brush aside the laxities that crept into their life. Though the mirror had over-accomplished its purpose, Pratik had always been a careful spender concerned about functionality rather than aesthetics. No one ever used this bathroom except Pratik anyways, so what is the point of a makeover exercise for a bathroom? Pratik. Pratik. Veena's voice startled Pratik. Oh my God, are you making hot cakes or caking yourself up in there? What's taking you so long? You can never be the go-getter because all you do is go late. The office party is happening because you called for it, damn it. Why should I be the one hurrying you around? She lashed out. The spell of the reflection was broken and so was Pratik's untimely spell of reflection on his life. Just two minutes, darling. I'm coming, retorted Pratik. What took you so long? We have a long way to go. Veena frowned as she grabbed her chic red heels from the shoe rack to go with her evening gown. Yes, we have a long way to go, but I will never give up. Pratik answered a little absent-minded as the smile continued to linger on his face. Oh Pratik, all I want you to do is to give up the pathetic effort of being debonair and stylish. Just cut the crap. This stupid charade of being witty and funny. It just doesn't suit you. You have been practicing it for weeks to impress all the puny girls at your office party. Finally, after months of this shitty COVID business, this stupid lockdown is over and I hope to see some other faces other than yours, maybe taste a decent glass of wine if it's available. Here you are bitten by Princess Bug. Flared Vina fastening the strap of her heels. Something sure is still bugging my queen. You look stunning. I'm going to stir quite a few jealousy pots. Pretty continued his playful banter. Vina stopped midway while strapping her heels, stunned at Pratik's uncharacteristic jovial mood. They had the biggest fight only last week and ever since Vina had been in a black mood. What irked her even more was that he seemed unaffected by her obvious irritability. He would go on the mobile for hours on the end and sometimes in muffled voice from inside the bathroom. If he is having an affair I care even less. Let him just man up and tell me so I can be free of this false pretense of a happily married life. This thought had crossed Vina's mind numerous times in the past week. Instead here was the man of her life handing out compliments in a platter. He was spending more and more time in that filthy bathroom of his along with his mobile. The more Vina tried to ignore this the fouler her mood became. His calm demeanor was infuriating her to no end. She was ready to end things between herself and Pratik at the drop of the hat now. For ten years their love had been strong enough to bind them in their marriage. Their childless status didn't seem to bother them much. At first they tried out everything and then Pratik got tried of it. Since the past few years a growing emptiness and pain was gnawing at Vena's heart. All Pratik seemed to be concerned about was growing his bank balance. His apathy towards her needs and her insistence that they fill the void of childlessness had made them grow apart. Apart from their joint business there was nothing to keep them together. Vina tried her best to keep her wits together but was failing miserably. She would spend the night sobbing and wetting the pillow while Pratik slept blissfully unaware. If he knew her pain perhaps he didn't care enough to comfort her. Look at the dark clouds. I hope it doesn't rain too heavily remarked Pratik on their drive to the restaurant. What about dark clouds plaguing my mind? How do you hope to deal with them? 
Pretty cares two hoots because he is happily romancing his newfound squeeze. No. I have to get out of this. Thought Vina as her mind wandered miles.